Hey guys, welcome back to Power Apps Learning Channel. In today's video, we'll be looking at how to get a employee ID of user from Azure AD into Power Apps. We'll be making use of Flow as well because directly you won't be able to get the employee ID from the the default connectors what are available. So we have to make a call to Flow. First, let's see a demo of a sample app. Then we'll jump into the details of it. So this is my uh, sample equipment allocation app where well, let me just run this and what fields you have here is user department employee ID, all equipments to be allocated so if you select the user which is recently joined whenever you select it if you see your department and employee ID fields are auto populated now you might wonder what's difficult in this so department is of course it is straightforward i have used office 365 uh, users connector here uh, so you can get the details of the user but for the employee ID uh, this is not present in the default connectors now we'll see why it's not present and how to get it so let me reset this let's close the preview let's go back to the presentation let's first understand why oh, I mean why there would be a need of having employee ID on the form itself because of course, it is a unique identifier. You might have users with the same display names. Of course, the email address might be different, but the, I mean, all the users from different departments, finance, HR, admin, accounts, and all that, they will know only the employee ID or the, the display name of the user. So it will be more uh, concrete or double verification, you can say, uh, to have the employee ID on the form. So they'll be sure, okay, we are, uh, doing the transaction with the correct employee only and it's not going to some some other wrong employee so employee ID is must for them so they will uh, come to you uh, as a whoever i mean you are it admin you are process a developer they'll come to you and say okay we need employee ID on the form now what's the problem here why can't we just get it using the office 365 user connector it's, it's the connector is already there you can get the properties you can get the manager, photos, department, whatever you want related to your user profile, you can get it using that connector. Why can't we just get the employee ID? Well, to understand that, let's just switch here and try to understand the... Now, this is the user profile attributes uh, documentation for the Azure ID. You can see it here. Azure ID uh, user profile attributes. If you try to look at the attributes, you won't find the employee ID here. So if I just drag down and these are the identity attributes, you won't find uh, the employee ID throughout this document. So the employee ID, you will find all other doc uh, properties, name, email address, location, state, street, everything is there, but the employee ID is not there. But at the same time, if you look at the graph APIs uh, user resource type, which the graph API returns back, there you'll find the employee ID. So if I just look at employee ID, you can find it here. So why we are not able to access it using the default connector? Because the default connector schema is different. It doesn't uh, support the employee ID. Now, when you sync, so first of all, this property is directly not available in the Azure ID. It is treated as extension property. When you synchronize your users from on-premise AD to Azure AD, you will be able to synchronize the employee IDs and employee, any whatever, if you have the custom property, you will be able to synchronize that. So you can see it here. So this these properties, the employee ID property is treated as extension property in Azure AD. So now, so if you see here, I'll just show you a sample uh, user profile here in the Azure ID. This is a employee ID property and this is my employee ID, let's say. So how to get this then? I mean, with the default connector, we are not able to access it. So if I go back and show you here. So let's see, this is my user uh, drop down, And on, let me just go to the department here. How we are getting the department value is we are using Office 365 users uh, connector again and user profile function. We are passing the selected email address, user's email address. Now, if I just show you what all properties this particular function returns is, you'll have a bunch of properties here. 
but uh, you will not find the employee id here so just city company country job title display name lot of properties are there email address but the employee id is not there so as i said it's an extension property you won't be able to access it directly with this function in the power apps so what we need to do is so let me just put it back to department is you have to make a call to the flow so whenever you are selecting a user here just zoom it a bit so whenever you are selecting a user on change of it i have called another flow uh, where we are sending the email address okay as an input parameter and getting back uh, the employee id so you can see it here now let's see what are the details in this flow so we'll just try to build uh, maybe we'll try to build a new flow here let's say altogether this is the flow which which i have triggered uh, from my app uh, we'll show you what are what things we have done here first is compose action it's just simple we are getting the input from the power apps just click on ask in power apps and this is a input parameter we are getting as an email address from the power apps so we are just calling get user profile uh, action from the office 365 users what you need here is the email address so we already got it user email address or you can use the output of the previous action and if you click on advance there is a field called select fields see so here you need to provide whatever uh, field we are looking for so we know so if i show you here it's an employee id of course this is a display name the internal name is uh, without space so i'll just go back and employee id so this will give you the employee id of the user which you are searching or whatever user profile we are getting you will get the employee id parameter as well by default you will not get it so you have to provide it specifically now let's just just run this flow with the the dummy parameter or we'll just pass in the email address and let's just run it and see what we get as a response so let's just save it test manually test put the email address this is what we'll be sending through the power apps just run it done and i'll just open this so just click on it now this is the output of uh, get user profile action where you will see that this particular graph api is being called with the select field property which is employed we are looking for and this is the output of it so we'll get the employee id result here so we we are getting the employee id you making use of uh, get user profile action you just need to provide the field parameter which you are looking for using select field now we have to access it and just send it back to our power apps so what you need to do is i'll just show you we'll again see what was the result okay, you can see it here as well let's see how we can access it okay so let's just go back and just edit it again so in this compose i have let's just try to read the default properties so let's say i want to read the department of it so what if you hover on it it would give you the details the expression of it output state user profile property uh, body and department so just do one thing to inspect and scroll up just copy this close it go to the expression i'll just close all of this and instead of department just make it employee id that's it so this will give you the employee id of from the previous response what your response you are getting and we'll just send it back so just add another text here and either you directly add that expression here or you just get it uh, as output of previous compose action so i've already added it i'll just delete this and let's just delete this test actions which we added 
this is all already there okay this seems fine and let us save it now in the power apps back to the power apps what we have done is of course uh, on change event of this so whenever you change it so let me just run it and show you if you search select particular user it will call the flow it will get the output and put it here show it here if you change the user let just change it and make it something else so you'll see the output is also changed so on change of it we are triggering the flow and what we are doing this is our flow dot run we're passing the email address of selected user and getting the output parameter we are setting it to into, into a variable and this variable is set as default property here to your employee ID field that's how it is changing it uh, whenever you change the user so that's how you will be able to get the user uh, employee id from azure id uh, in the power apps by making a call to a flow so that's the way i found it if you know another better way simple way you can directly get it in the power apps please put it in the comments i would love to know about it and if you want to know more about it if you need more clarification just ask it in the comments i will i'll try try my best to answer it just one more validation i have added here uh, whenever i mean we are calling the flow only when if you have selected something in the user drop down otherwise it will keep throwing the error uh, i mean we'll just try to avoid that just whenever it is not blank then only call the flow and yeah i guess that's it uh, this let's just switch back to the presentation yeah how to achieve this create a flow trigger it from the power apps get it back and set it to the field that's what we did and uh, this is a main part where you use the get user profile action just in the select field pass employee id and it will give you the employee id yeah that's all i guess i uh, hope this will help you guys thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for next video soon